Okay, here we go. We're on the Holocaust now. So remember that the background is that the Nazis were built this new racial order. Okay, so the Germanic people or the Aryans were considered a master race. Anyone that was not an Aryan, okay, particularly the Jewish people, were considered inferior. This race's message eventually becomes leads to the Holocaust. Okay. By definition, the Holocaust is a systematic mass slaughter of Jews and other groups judged inferior by the Nazis. Okay, it's time, it's a, basically the systematic extermination of Jews in Europe during World War II. It should only be used to describe this time period. Anything else would be described as ethnic cleansing or genocide. So when we talk about different genocides at the end of the school year, um, this is one of them. <clears throat> To gain any support for his racist ideas, he had to tap into the hatred of Jews that existed in European history. Remember that hatred of Jews is called anti-Semitism. Remember that this starts way back in the Middle Ages when um, people were not allowed to have certain jobs if they were Catholic, like lending money, and it was open to the Jews. Okay, So whenever you're trying to scapegoat somebody you're looking for the person that's different the person that's easy to blame it's easy to blame somebody who's richer than you are somebody who's different from you are somebody you don't understand germans even blame the jews for their country's defeat in world war one which is not accurate and for economic problems after the war that's really the treaty of versailles <clears throat> so the nazis made targeting the jews a government policy they're going to do that slowly but surely by passing laws that limit the kinds of work the jews can do um, they're going to define what makes you Jewish as an individual with one or more Jewish grandparents. So if you have um, four grandparents, one of them being Jewish. Um, Jews were subject to the Reich, not citizens. Remember that when you're a subject, you do not have the same amount of rights as a citizen does. For example, a citizen of the United States can vote. A, a person living inside the United States that's not a citizen cannot vote. The Nuremberg Laws were passed in 1935. What were they? Okay. They were laws that were outlawing certain things. First one, marriage between a Jew and a non-Jew or an Aryan is outlawed. They were expelled from government jobs and public schools. You couldn't go to public school any longer. You couldn't have a government job, teacher, um, judge, along those lines. You had to register with the state. You had to have identifiably Jewish names. We talked about this in school, that basically there are certain names that traditionally go along with Jewish names. My name, for example, is Maureen, which is a... Um, Irish name and the last name, my last name O'Donnell, also an Irish name, so identifiably Jewish names. Um, Sarah, David, Joshua, um, a lot of biblical names. You had to wear Rebecca for a girl. You had to wear the Star of David on their clothes. A lot of people realize that one. Um, that one's very um, noteworthy because people have always seen the pictures of that. You had to carry identification papers that said that you were Jewish. You were forced to sell property and could not own jewelry. When we get to some of the pictures from the concentration camps, you'll see the amount of jewelry that's confiscated, which becomes a big deal. Um, a fine of one billion marks was levied against the Jews. This was Hitler's way of trying to pay off the um, reparations from World War II. World War I, sorry. Kristallnacht, remember Kristallnacht is a German diplomat starts off with this, living in Paris was shot to avenge the deportation of Jews. So what happens on the 9th is that basically there is an organized attack by Nazi stormtroopers attacking Jewish homes, businesses, and synagogues across Germany, and they murdered about 100 Jews. It became known as the Night of Bro Broken Glass or Crystal Knock. Remember that we said that if you look at the word crystal looking like glass, knocked like it's a nocturnal, that um, uh, German and English are not that far apart. On the upper left-hand side is a storefront, and the lower right-hand side is storefronts both destroyed. And the lower left-hand side and the upper right-hand side are two synagogues okay, from this time period. Pictures from this time period, primary sources. What's the reaction? Okay, They're going to stop, step up their um, policy of Jewish persecution. Okay? So what happens is a lot of people by 1939 are going to start to flee Germany. Okay? Other people are like, no, this is my country. I'm not leaving. And they remained in Germany. So Hitler, Hitler's um, response to the whole problem is to basically what he calls the Jewish problem is forced emigration. I'm going to make it so uncomfortable for you to live here. You're going to want to go someplace else. 
what happens is getting other countries to continue to admitting the Jews becomes an issue. So eventually, places like France, Britain, and the United States close the doors to further immigration, making it um, impossible for people to leave to Germany and leading to a higher casualty numbers in the Holocaust. Okay, his next step, if you're not leaving, okay, because you couldn't get everybody to leave, he orders everybody to go into designated cities. From there, they're herded into overcrowded ghettos or segregated Jewish areas. Okay, he's going to seal off the ghettos with barbed wire and stone walls. He's going to hope that inside, because you've packed people into a smaller area, that they're going to starve to death because they're not going to have enough food or they're going to die from disease. Okay, but what's going to happen? A lot of Jews are going to survive. So what's it like in the ghetto? Okay, they're actually going to form resistance movements inside there. They're going to keep their tra traditions alive. They're going to have ghetto theaters to produce plays and concerts. They're going to have teachers to teach lessons in secret schools. They're going to have scholars that, re that keep records so that everyone's going to know eventually what happens. Here's a couple images of from the ghettos. If you notice the one on the left-hand side, you've got a wall going right through a city. And on one side of it would be not non-ghetto. And the other side would be where the Jews were living. Okay, um, the property value of the one house would probably go down on the other side. The upper right hand side, you do have a picture of Hitler standing in front of the wall, the walled off area of ghetto, and the lower right hand side of the mark of the um, ration tickets for buying certain items inside. Here are the rations. So you would just cut off uh, one of the rations, and you would be able to buy things with those rations. It's similar to what we had in World War II in the United States. So between 41 and 43, basically the resistance movements are going to grow. The most famous attempt was in Warsaw, Warsaw, which is of course the capital of Poland. So in January of 43, they're gonna fire, um, basically gonna fight fire against German troops because they're gonna come in to round up another group of people to deport them to, at that point in 43, death camps. So when they come in on April 19th, they enter and they wanna deport any surviving inhabitants. About 750 people are going to fight the um, heavily armed and well-trained Germans. They're going to hold out for about a month. The revolt ends on May 16, 43, and 56,000 Jews are captured. About 7,000 were shot, and the remainder are deported to killing centers or concentration camps. There's a difference there. Killing center, basically, you're going to, you're not going to live, okay? And the concentration camp, you're going to form, you're going to have some function for them working in some kind of way. This is probably the most famous picture of the ghetto up war is up war saw a ghetto uprising with a young boy with his hands up um and women and children there so you don't expect them really to have that fight resistance if you look at the, um, the condition of the boy his legs are really kind of thin he should have some meat on that um and his upper legs and he doesn't to give you an idea of how much they were doing so when the, the ghettos weren't work working he decides to go for what's called the final solution Okay, it's a program of genocide or a systematic killing of the entire people. To protect his racial purity, they had to eliminate all the other races, nationalities, or groups they viewed as subhuman or inferior. Who were the targets? Okay, the Roma or the Gypsies, the Poles, the Russians, anyone who was gay, homosexuals, the insane, the disabled, the incurably ill, the Jews. They had to wear patches. The Star of David is not the only patch that was worn on people's clothing. Other people were identified by different patches. And these are some of the sample patches from that time period. All right. So units from the SS are going to move from town to town to hunt down the Jews. Okay. They're going to round up women, children, babies, take them to isolated spots. They're going to um, shoot the prisoners in pits and become prisoners' graves. Uh, Germans and communities were not reached by the killing. were also then rounded up. Most of the concentration camps are located inside Germany and Poland. Okay, they're going to be further away from um, uh, civilization. They're going to work seven days a week as prisoners for the U.S. Uh, for the SS or for the German business. Sorry. Okay, you're going to beat the guards are going to beat or kill anyone that didn't work fast enough. Some of the companies that use slave labor included Volkswagen, Bayer, Blaupunk. Blaupunk is a stereo system out of Germany, Volkswagen recognizes the car, Bayer, as in Bayer aspirin. There are people who still won't buy these products because of that. The final stage is when they started building extermination camps. They had huge gas chambers that could kill as many as 6,000 people in a day. The doctors separated the strong, mostly men, from the weak, mostly women, young children, the elderly, and the sick. The lows, anyone who's labeled weak would die that day. They wouldn't bother. They told to undress them for a shower, led them into the chambers for the shake with fake shower heads. 
cyanide gas are gonna pour from the shower heads and all inside were killed in a matter of minutes, okay? If you look at the map of the concentration camps, okay? If you look at some of the ones, the extermination sites are the straight black boxes, squares, okay? Treblinka, okay, look how far east they are, okay? If you look at ones that are concentration and extermination camps are the, um, the clear triangles, of course, when you look at that, you say to yourself, the most famous, the one that you recognize, you look down by the word Czechoslovakia is the word Auschwitz. So that's the one that everyone pretty much knows, okay? And then the concentration camps are gonna be further west. Ravensbrück, which is um, just north of Berlin, is one of the more famous ones that you come across. So you start to see that the further east they are, basically, the more they are an extermination site. The first camp created was Dachau. It became a model for every other camp. By 39, there were seven major camps. The early camps were primarily for political prisoners. If you read the book Thief, you know what I'm talking about with this one. The worst camps were in the East. We just talked about that. The camps varied in size and prisoner makeup. And there are two types of camps, death camps and slave labor camps. Okay. So death camps. They begin with euthanasia program, which is in 1939, which is going to get rid of anybody who they deemed not strong enough, okay? Crippled people, people who had some kind of physical deformity, mental, people who were mentally retarded, we'd call them developmentally disabled now, the elderly, any kind of deformed children, people who did not have the ability to um, contribute to society. Most common method of death was the gas chamber. Auschwitz is the largest of the extermination camps. Okay, so I'm going to start to get into some image. I'm going to end this video and then I'm going to start another one just so that you understand that there are some disturbing pictures.